Um, I'm sure you'll be able to hear me. Um, just uh, to start off, what I'm going to try and do this morning is capture three main points in relation to virtual reality, and that's around how we use it in Gwent, some of the pros and cons which we found with it, and what I think are the next steps in relation to how we can um, go on using virtual reality. Um, I did have a film clip, but ironically, at a digital conference, uh, the film clip has failed us. So um, I'll just describe as best as I can. So we've been using virtual reality in Gwent for the last 15 months. Um, and we use it as part of our blended um, learning offer for both student officers and for experienced officers as part of their CPD. Um, and I'm sure most of you who have seen virtual reality are used to seeing people wearing headsets and using it in that way. But we find it far more beneficial to use it um, as a virtual reality cave where the person stands with three screens around them with the graphics projected onto those three screens which causes an immersive environment for them. What that allows us to do is then have a group of officers who are sat behind them actually viewing what's taking place on the virtual reality. An audience participation is a key element in the way in which we deliver the system in Gwent. Um, whilst there's only one person actually operating the controls, the audience participation um, forms a major part of the decision-making process as we use the scenarios. And at given points within the scenario, a number of questions and discussion points will be presented to the user. And this is where um, the trainer really comes into play in that they're able to facilitate that discussion with the uh, group, of, group in the audience as to what should happen next in relation to the scenario. We've developed three scenarios so far in Gwent. So one is on domestic abuse, which really focuses on coercive and controlling behavior. One on golden hour principles, uh, where the scenario is based around a stranger rape and a third one uh, for custody, which targets custody sergeants. And we've got um, another three which we're currently producing on stop search, disclosure, and taser. So in relation to some of the pros and cons of the system, uh, one of the major benefits for us is that it's not death by PowerPoint. It's far more visually stimulating for the audience, and um, there's lots going on on the screen which holds their attention. And we find it's a very practical way of delivering the learning objectives. It allows the user to get an appreciation of dealing with some high-risk incidents in a safe learning environment, but at the same time, we're able to challenge them on their actions and their decision-making. So, for example, in the golden hour um, scenario, which is a, a rape scene in an alley, there'll be a muddy footprint on the floor, and it'll be raining heavily. Um, there's the option within the scenario to move items around. So what we look for the, the user to do is actually like, pick a bin lid up and put it down over the footprint to preserve the evidence. And it's really interesting to see whether people pick up on those key elements. And it really embeds um, those learning elements when they then, uh, you know, operationally in the real world. And what we're also able to do is um, pull different elements from from the same scenario to get a learning outcome. So that's some real positives which we find from it. Engagement levels from users have been good, um, but we have some people who really like it and some people who are less keen on using it. Um, because it's new tech in force, people tend to be motivated to get involved in it anyway. But the caveat I would put on that is an expectation around um, an expectation around how the actual product looks. So when we say to them, oh, we'll be using virtual reality, many of them, because they are used to high-end gaming, think they're going to go in and play Grand Theft Auto, and that's not the reality of it. You know, it's not up to that level. So it's really important for us to have those conversations early on around um, it's, this is all about your decision-making and the learning outcomes rather than how the product actually looks, because whilst it's good, it's not at some, you know, as I say, Grand Theft Auto um, type production. Um, another issue which we have with some people is it can cause motion sickness, we've found. So we still then need to have an alternative 
for those people um, that they can actually have that same learning experience but without um, using the virtual reality system. So just in relation then to where um, I think it needs to go, the cost of the equipment is not the prohibitive factor in relation to virtual reality. Um, it's more the cost of building the scenarios. And I know, you know, there's, I think probably half the forces out there now have embarked on some form of virtual reality. Um, and we need to start getting some standardization as forces as to how that looks and possibly move to a situation as we have with Hydra, where the scenarios are held on a cloud and forces who participate are then able to draw down the, or download those scenarios. Otherwise, we're going to be in a position whereby we're going to have 43 forces all going through the cost of producing the same or very similar scenarios. Um, and I know we've spoke with Paula today from the college around you know, how we can actually improve that and get some consistency um, across forces. Um, so I hope that gives you some indication of how we use virtual reality in Gwent. Thank you.